Step 3. Example. Now it's time to look at some properties of the electric and magnetic fields in the form of an example. So let's consider an electric field that is polarized in the x direction, meaning it only varies in the x direction and not in any other direction. And furthermore, let's consider that our electric uh, wave is propagating in the z direction. Now, this is the expression for a very simple uh, harmonic uh, uh, wave. E0 times sine kz minus omega t. This hat ex signifies that uh, the electric field varies only in the x direction, like we said. Kz means that it's propagating along the z direction, and this minus in front of the omega t means that it's traveling in the positive z direction, not in the negative z direction. If it was traveling in the opposite direction, we would have had a plus omega t in there. And the question now is, how do we compute the associated magnetic field? So, we go back to the Maxwell's equations, in particular Maxwell's third equation, that tells us the curl of the electric field is related to the negative of the time derivative of the magnetic field. So let's see, if we follow the equations, what kind of magnetic field this gives us. Let's start on the left-hand side with the curl. The expression for the most general curl is quite complicated, but in this case, because the electric field is polarized in the x direction only, it simplifies to something very simple. It tells us that the curl of the electric field is given by the following expression. It's minus the z derivative of ey in the x direction, plus the z derivative of ex in the y direction. But remember, we said that our electric field is polarized in the x direction only, meaning that this first term, Ey, is zero, therefore we can forget about it. And the curl of the magnetic field is only given by this following vector, whose magnitude is the dEx by dBz. Great! Now we can go back to our um, Maxwell's third equation and substitute this uh, z derivative, which is k times e0 times cosine of kz minus omega t. And it's a vector, so don't forget about this direction uh, along the y-axis. Equating that with our negative time derivative of the magnetic field, we get the following expression. And this, in order to find the magnetic field, what we have to do is we have to integrate with respect to time, which is a very straightforward task. And finally, we arrive at the following. We get that the magnetic field is given by k over omega times e naught sine kz minus omega t, and the direction of this vector is in the y direction. Don't forget that. So, in other words, we get the following. We get that the B is related to our initial uh, electric field, the magnitude of the electric field, but it's rescaled by this 1 over c. It's rescaled by the speed of light. Notice a few things. The magnitude of the magnetic field is much smaller than the magnitude of the electric field. c is a huge number. Remember, it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Therefore, the electric field the magnitude of the electric field is always much stronger than the associated magnetic field in an electromagnetic wave. Also, E and B are always perpendicular. Starting with the electric field polarized in the x direction, Maxwell's equations tell us that the associated magnetic field is only varying in the y direction. And furthermore, we see that the two expressions are in phase, meaning when the electric field becomes maximum, the magnetic field also becomes a maximum. When the electric field is zero, the magnetic field is zero. So, uh, bearing that in mind, we can now plot our magnetic field, and it's as this following blue line tells us. Of course, here it's not exactly to scale. If we did it to scale, we wouldn't even be able to see the variation of the magnetic field. But again, because E0 was polarized in the x direction, the magnetic field has to be perpendicular to it, so it's varying only in the y direction. Why is it not uh, varying in the z direction? Because 
if the wave is propagating in the z direction, the electric field and the magnetic field cannot have any components in that direction. They always have to have components which are perpendicular to the direction of travel. So these are the three basic uh, and very general properties of electromagnetic waves in terms of the properties of the electric field and its associated magnetic field. So let's list them. We said that the electric field and the magnetic field are always perpendicular to the direction of travel. They don't have any field components along that direction. And the direction of travel is given by the cross product between the electric field and the magnetic field. In particular, if you point your index finger in the direction of the electric field, uh, B is then your middle finger, the thumb will give you the direction of travel. Two, they are orthogonal and in phase. And three, the ratio of the magnitudes of the electric field and the magnetic field is always constant and given by the speed of light. This concludes step three.